because there were spaces uh, that people could have been referred to all of those nights without exception, including last night. And going forward, I've indicated that we're going to expand the Better Living Center. Um, and we had some other excess capacity uh, last night uh, to take account of people who might have needed space. So um, I would just say we're proceeding with the expansion of the Better Living Center, a further expansion again today. Um, we're watching this on a day-by-day, hour-by-hour basis, and we'll do what we have to do. But as for the information, I think the message has been received loud and clear that it is just not acceptable uh, for people to be given false information. I think you're going to find a significant improvement um, in that, in, in the sense that if at least we rely on the one source of information we have, which is checked every day at 4 o'clock, as Mr. Raft has told you in quite a bit of detail yesterday, 4 o'clock in the morning, we will then be able to um, you know, go forward and give people accurate information about where they can get help and make sure they get to the place where they're going to get that help. Do you think it was a... So, sorry. The, yeah, go ahead, John. Well, we, we've asked, and, and in fact, as, as I indicated to you, that in the event that they come forward with satisfactory answers, it's a likelihood that a seventh respite centre with 100 beds would be created at the Moss Park Armoury. Uh, but with respect to the Better Living Centre, part of the reason that we started at, I think, 20 and have scaled ourselves up to now 140, tonight 150, is uh, in order to make sure we do it in a way that we can provide uh, proper, uh, sensitive service to the people and staff it appropriately. And having been there last night, uh, they're coping fine with that, and there were. Uh, 40, I think I said 41 spaces that were available there last night that were not used, and they will be available tonight, plus 10 more. Um, and, and so um, I would just say to you that we are monitoring this on a day-by-day -day basis, but the very fact we're having the discussion about the Moss Park armories and about the discussions with the federal government is because our staff have identified yesterday that the likelihood of a seventh respite centre being needed has uh, is something that they concluded yesterday and told me yesterday, and we're acting on it today. We acted on it yesterday, actually. spaces for families, uh, shelter capacity It's one of our most difficult challenges. I might ask Mr. Raftus if he'd come forward, but it, it is a difficult challenge. It, I can tell you right now that the challenge gets more difficult as you get to couples, let alone couples with children, and then couples with children becomes even more complicated in terms of just the capacity of the system uh, and, and the, the challenge involved in expanding that. It's easier to expand a service where you are having single people who can stay uh, with one another, either women or men. Uh, but maybe you'd like to talk to the family situation, Paul. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, the family situation, so if we look back earlier in the year, we've actually added about 1,400 beds to the system. Many of those beds are, have been in the family sector to meet that demand, and we continue to have that demand come on a regular basis. So we have our team working closely with people who are calling. Where people are already in existing housing, um, then we talk to them about um, moving into shelter, uh, when, a, when an appropriate bed becomes available, as long as they are in housing at that time. Um, if, they are, if they do not have access to housing, then we move them in right away. So we have expanded that capacity in the last year on a, a very large scale. But right now, do they have a place to go tonight? Yes, absolutely. Um, so again, when people call in and we talk to them about their individual circumstances, <laughs> if they're staying with family, uh, and friends, they may continue to stay with family. Um, and as we look you know, forward and spaces become available, then we would move them into those spaces. If someone didn't have an immediate place to stay, then we would move to have them uh, get shelter right away. Mr. Mayor, some might yeah. accuse you of caving to political pressure by now saying that the Moss Park Armory should be open because the city stands for some time, including the vote against doing it in December, was was steadfast in that it's, it's not the the city stance, to be clear, and I think my stance, to be clear as well, always was that this was, I think the expression I used was down the list of options because we had identified, the staff had to me, and I took their advice, uh, other options that could be uh, implemented faster and perhaps better. Uh, and a, a good example of that is the Better Living Centre, where we took a building we owned and in pretty short order had it uh, made available for the purposes that it's now being used for, housing uh, tonight up to 150 uh, people. And so we never said it was off the table. Uh, it never was off the table. In fact, the very fact there were discussions ongoing uh, with federal people during December after the council meeting indicated we were exploring that because we didn't know whether we would get to the stage where we would need more capacity or not. Uh, having concluded yesterday that it's a strong likelihood, uh, a virtual certainty that we will need extra capacity um, now, an eighth, uh, a seventh uh, respite uh, center, uh, we are now activating in a 
more formal way those discussions. And as I've said, if the answers come back uh, correct with respect to the suitability of the Moss Park Armory for use as that uh, extra respite centre, uh, then it will have my support. But it's not a matter of, of anything to do with politics. So let's put politics aside and just look at the fact that we have a need to be met. We were meeting it in order of places that we had available that best suited our needs and our ability to deliver services. And we're now to the stage where the Moss Park Armories in the eastern part of the city um, is an option that is looking subject to the right answers being received uh, as a suitable option for us. Mayor Tory, while. How about the meeting, the emergency meeting that you're working, uh, what were you expecting to discuss with the province there? I would like to hope that to beyond the very solid start, and I will say it's a solid start, uh, which is the $90 million over three years for supportive housing, there's much more that needs to be done. I mean, I think the mental health system overall. Um, is in a crisis, in Toronto in particular. I can't speak for the rest of the province, uh, but I can certainly speak to Toronto and how in every area of life that you face here in the city government, whether it's uh, public health, policing, uh, housing, uh, shelters, uh, you come across uh, a huge uh, group of people who are experiencing mental health issues and are not getting the support they need. And so I'm very hopeful that we can come out with a, uh, an approach that would be collaborative between and among all governments. In the end, we are really going to solve the shelter emergency problem piece by piece, group by group. So we have to sort of say, all right, how can we work better together with the federal government and the province to integrate refugees more swiftly? How can we address the issue of affordable housing more quickly with the other governments to get more housing coming on stream faster? How can we address mental health issues so some people who are presently living in shelters with deep mental illness are in fact able to go to supportive housing and be out of the shelter system and before long if you actually put those people in a place where they're getting the help they really need you actually can see um, this problem that we're sitting standing here talking about today um, start to uh, diminish itself because people are getting better care uh, and they're not in uh, what is um, you know to go back to the question I was asked earlier clearly inadequate unacceptable uh, kinds of conditions for people with issues yeah, there seems to be a description of these calls where people call and they're told, I'm sorry, no bed available. There seems to be a description amongst yourself and the staff here that this is an anomaly, that it's not staff looking at the numbers in real time and saying there is nothing available, but they're somehow making a mistake. Do you see this as just, oops, sorry, no beds? Or is there a systemic thing that all staff are looking at and they're all pretty sure in their expertise minds that there are no beds. What's actually happening? I think uh, what we are going to find out from both Mr. Raftis's <laughs> review and from the review done by the Ombudsman is the answer to that question. So I, I don't think we do because I think what, what's interesting is that there are actually two different numbers people call and this was uh, explained to me in some detail again last night which is one is a, a central intake number and the other one is you can call directly to the Peter Street referral uh, center and, and it is possible to call those two numbers and get different answers on the availability of, uh, of, of, of shelter. The fact, the, fact, the fact is that during all of the nights uh, that we're looking at, say in the last 30, um, there has been a space available if someone had called and said I need a space and they could be referred to a space and they confirmed that for me at Peter Street last night and they said at Peter Street they don't give up until they find a space for somebody wherever it might be. So I think the answer to your question is that some people somewhere in the system for some reason don't have access to the accurate up-to-date information uh, and that's something that we obviously have to fix as soon as possible. Um, I think over. The, I think we have to fix it now by just making sure we transmit the information we do have but I think in the meantime the systemic problem and I'm convinced yes there must be one um, is something where we have to get to the root of it and find out why. Mayor Tory as Jamie, a... Sorry. Um, when the, the, the military is there to help Canadians in crisis when you look at the heavy snowfall we got several years ago, the mayor made a phone call, the military boots on the ground. Calgary getting flooded out, boots were on the ground immediately in that crisis. Forest fires, same thing. Why is it when we have a crisis with the homeless people, there's negotiations and bureaucratic red tape in opening up an armory to get people out of the if the building was sitting empty and there was nothing going on in that building, then your question I think would be a very valid and appropriate one where we could just say, well, look, that building's empty. Could you please just open the doors, turn on the heat, and we'd like to go in there. It is an active military installation. It is being used day by day by the Canadian forces. And so the reason why we have to have, it's not a negotiation, it's just a discussion with them, um, is to make sure that we can find a way to uh, separate off a part of that building for use uh, as a homeless shelter. Make sure, because in previous times when it was used, I think most of those times, 
times it was not available 24 hours a day, so people had to leave the building at 7 o'clock in the morning. Uh, we have to make sure that it's available through until April at least. Um, so there are just questions to be answered um, that they have to answer within the context of, of their own uh, ongoing operations. This is a building that is in active use every single day. And so that is why those discussions are necessary. That is why they're taking place. I've asked for answers to those questions uh, by the end of the day tomorrow, which I think is reasonable. And then we could proceed uh, if, if uh, the answers came back right uh, to, uh, to make use of that building if that's uh, what would best address our need. Mayor Tory, uh, it's Wednesday. Uh, and uh, over the course of the weekend, uh, there have been citizens who have been renting hotel rooms for people. Uh, one of our reporters, Arda Zakarian, was at the Better Living Center. A homeless man came up to her, said, I can't get in. Arda went up to the front of the Better Living Center with this person. Security turned him away. Um, as the chief magistrate of the city, as the CEO of the city, the person that's in charge, why weren't you here in the city over the weekend to address this? And why was your staff unable to tell us where you are. Well, there was no secret. I talked in year-end interviews about where I was, uh, and I, like uh, so many people, I took a few days with my family, uh, and uh, I was, uh, as I said, receiving reports every single day without exception as to exactly what was going on. I issued a detailed statement, I think, on Sunday or Monday of this past week, um, and uh, was in touch with the staff uh, at all points in time. So uh, I, again, uh, they were doing the hard work which is done by staff of actually making sure uh, that the facilities were open and that they were staffed. There were some mistakes made. There were some mistakes made by people at doors or on phones saying there wasn't space when in fact there was. In fact, it was patently obvious if somebody put their head inside the door of the Better Living Center that there was a space available there, but somebody made a mistake and said there wasn't. And I, I'm sorry for that because that's just a mistake made by somebody and, and frankly, um, you know, unless I'd been standing beside them and knew there was a space available and corrected them, um, there wasn't anything that I could do about that. But we're going to do better. We're taking steps today to do more. Um, we are taking steps today to address the problems of communication that have existed so that they don't uh, repeat themselves and that's I think uh, what we're best uh, to be here to do um, and to make sure that people are kept safe uh, during extraordinary times, extraordinary both in terms of the weather uh, and also in terms of the uh, uh, social pressures of refugees and of uh, people who are displaced. Would you characterize the situation right now as many have as a crisis? I would say that large elements of this represent a crisis in the sense that any time you see yourself pushing up against uh, the very upper limit of the capacity you have to deal with people who are displaced and homeless, um, that is a very urgent situation. And so that is why we're standing here today saying that we're taking measures, plural, one being to expand the capacity at the Better Living Center, a second being to now uh, operationalize another uh, winter respite center, and we will continue to take whatever action is necessary to make sure we have the capacity in place and that we fix the communications such that people will know that no matter who they are or where they are, uh, there will be a space they can find to shelter themselves uh, in, uh, in these uh, intemperate months. I talked to a homeless man the other day who said yeah. that uh, this was a bit of a scavenger hunt for him to be able to find a bed uh, in, in the city over this weekend, the, the past couple of days. Can you stand here as the mayor today and say and ensure to the folks that are watching um, that might be in need of a bed tonight, that they are not going to get turned away, that they're not going to be told uh, that there is no room for them, and it won't be a scavenger hunt, that people will be able to get in and get somewhere warm tonight. The scavenger hunt part of this, uh, if you accept that language, but the scavenger hunt part of this is the part that we must resolve through better communication. We must not have a situation again at all as happened over the weekend where people were told there wasn't a space when in fact we knew there was space. We knew there was space and one part of the government was saying no when in fact the other part of the government knew there was actually space that you could see with your own eyes. And so we have to resolve that first and foremost and make sure then that people know not only that there is space but where it is. And that is something that we're pledged to do much better on uh, going forward and we've also indicated some measures today that are going to expand uh, the amount of spaces available so that we both have more space and that we communicate better where it is and how people can get there uh, so that they will be able to be assured that if they need space, they will have it. And that is our overriding objective, and that's what we're going to get back to work on right now. And I thank you all very much. Now, Jamie, that was a uh, – pardon me? Well, I'll take one question on that. Yes. You're going to be going to the memorial service. Your thoughts? 
this was uh, one of the great heroes for large numbers of people. As people my age, of course, knew him as a hockey hero, but I think people of other generations knew him as a hero in the sense of building up our city and in the sense of our community, because uh, he showed up at everything, not only as an ambassador for the Leafs, but just as a great, loyal Torontonian. Uh, and he'll be sadly missed. He was a person who was a gentleman to everybody, including me, whoever came up and shook his hand. And, you know, I was as impressed when I shook his hand at age 62 last year as I was the first time I met him. And he always treated you like you were the most important person that he'd ever met, and uh, he'll be sadly missed. They don't make them that way anymore, and that's, as I said in the article I wrote for the Toronto Sun, that's why he had the number one uh, on the back of his jersey. Uh, that, was, uh, not, that, was not an, that was not an accident.